It's, it's now my pleasure to introduce Professor Taeyun uh, Kim to everyone. Uh, Professor Kim uh, received his PhD from MIT and after a postdoctoral experience at the University of Chicago, uh, joined our uh, faculty. Uh, he's a renowned expert uh, on using agent-based models uh, to study cell mechanics in order to better understand you know, how physical forces and, and related uh, things uh, that impact cells and tissues really contribute to their behavior on a wide set uh, of, of biological uh, spectra, uh, including everything from embryonic development to wound healing to a multitude of diseases and how they take hold uh, on, on the cell and, and tissue scale. Uh, so it's, it's really sort of a, a new world of opportunities of how we in the biomedical field understand and are able to uh, both predict and provide therapies, uh, quite frankly, at, at, um, in a, on a miniaturized scale uh, compared to what uh, we've had in the past. Um, his computational research has been widely supported both by the National Science Foundation uh, as well as uh, NIH. Uh, and, and I believe he's one of the youngest uh, ever, maybe, editorial board members uh, of the flagship journal in his field, which is Cytoskeleton. Uh, so again, without further ado, I, I'll introduce to you Taeyun Kim. I uh, look forward to his presentation. Taeyun, uh, take it from here. So thank you very much for the great introduction, George. Um, it is my kind of pleasure um, to have opportunity to talk about the, my life. Um, as the, uh, um, the person and the researcher and instructor. So I don't, I mean, my presentation will be pretty short. So just, I wanna give the overview about kind of the three things. First of all, just uh, let me just uh, talk about uh, myself um, as the person. Um, so I, I would like to point out the important event in my life. Uh, first of all, I was born in the 1979 in the Seoul, South Korea. So I came from South Korea and uh, I went through the, just the regular educational path, you know, with elementary and the middle school and high school, just like other people in, the, in this kind of meeting room. And then um, I kind of served uh, for the, the mandatory, the military service for the two years and the two months uh, in the, the camp Greaves uh, of the U.S. Army, although I didn't like belong to the U.S. Army. So this camp was located, you know, I, this camp was only one mile away from the demilitarized zone, which is the borderline between North Korea and South Korea. So it was quite dangerous kind of the uh, place. And uh, sadly, our mission was to uh, mission in the war was to delay uh, the enemy's attack by five minutes uh, before they were being wiped out. Uh, but, said, um, but fortunately, there was no like war uh, during my presence, so I could come to the Purdue as a faculty member. Uh, then I graduated from the, the Seoul National University in 2004, uh, and, uh, uh, and I got a degree from the mechanical engineering. So my kind of whole background is like a mechanical engineers. Um, then um, I got married um, the, with um, the, my the beautiful wife. So the, my wife gave me uh, the specific instruction that I should say the beautiful wife. Uh, just kidding. Um, then the, I came to the U.S. Um, in the uh, I came to the Boston in 2005 uh, for the pursuing the graduate study in the MIT, and I graduated uh, in the 2011 uh, in the, the mechanical engineering. After that, uh, I spent about three years in the University of Chicago uh, to gain the ex research experience as a postdoc. Um, and uh, I was quite close, you know, for the um, from here from the West Lafayette. Then I came to the Purdue as faculty member uh, in 2013. But in the meantime, uh, I got the, uh, the two like lovely kind of children, the Lena and Aiden in 2012 and 2014. Okay, so now uh, I would like to talk about uh, uh, the, my research uh, br briefly. So my research um, is involved with the mechanics in the biology. So nowadays, um, nobody uh, would disagree that the mechanics um, is very important. Um, for the in the biology, so the for example, mechanical forces play the various roles 
uh, in the, the biological processes. Uh, for example, the cells can move uh, from the one location to another location by generating kind of the mechanical forces. And during the cell division, uh, the strong and the concentrated force is required to the divide one cell into the two daughter cells. And, uh, the em and also the embryo um, can shape the, the, uh, their organs um, by the generating the mechanical forces because during this kind of the embryogenesis, large of the cells are deformed and moved around and which require the mechanical forces. And also the, the, the heart uh, can the pump the blood, blood uh, into the body uh, the, by just uh, generating the mechanical forces. So this, these mechanical forces um, for the biological process processes are mostly generated by the polymeric structure in cells called the cytoskeleton. So this cytoskeleton um, uh, help cells generate the mechanical force and that forces can be translated to the cellular level uh, to facilitate many kind of the cell scale behaviors such as the cell migration or the cell divisions. But mechanical forces can be translated to the even the larger scale um, the most of the cells in the physiological kind of the conditions, um, they, the cells are surrounded by very dense, the polymeric kind of the matrix called extracellular matrix. So this is a kind of cell and the, uh, the gray color shows the extracellular matrix. The cells are uh, deformed and uh, remodel this kind of surrounding the extracellular matrix for the various kind of the biological processes. Um, for, um, su such as the wound healing and or the, the cancer metastasis. I have developed the various kind of various types of the computational models um, to kind of the find the mechanism uh, to find the roles of the mechanics uh, in the biology. So my research in the past was the mostly focused on the cytoskeleton. So to understand the mechanical property of the cytoskeleton, I kind of recreated uh, this kind of polymeric kind of structure, which looks like a cytoskeleton, and apply the external mechanical cue, um, then the, the then the measure the response uh, to kind of estimate their I mean, kind of the uh, mechanical kind of the properties, and also the. Uh, um, <clears throat> I studied how the cytoskeleton can generate the mechanical force uh, internally by the interactions between the cytoskeletal components. Okay, then, then recently um, I focused on the larger length scale. The, for example, we kind of, uh, we investigated how the cells can the, the migrate or the move by mechanically interacting with the underlying kind of the substrate. And also the, uh, um, we kind of show that, demonstrate that how the cells can the significantly deform the surrounding extracellular matrix um, the, for the, the cancer, cancer metastasis. And uh, we also the, uh, um, <clears throat> show that the, the, how the, the, the cells can the contract the surrounding extracellular matrix uh, by the generating these contractile forces which is very important for the, the wound healing the process. And the very recently, um, <clears throat> we kind of the, um, the show that the how a cell embedded in the dense, the extracellular matrix can the make the, the space the, by the mechanical forces to undergo the uh, cell division process. And uh, this is, uh, um, has been recently highlighted by the many kind of the news media. So likewise, um, the, our lab kind of has dedicated um, to the, the computational modeling um, of the, the biological processes driven uh, involved with the, the, the mechanics. So as computational modeler, uh, the collab, I mean, it is crucial to validate our result by comparing with the experiment. So I have been co actively collaborating with kind of talented experimentalists uh, in the, the, mul the multiple institute you know, in the Asia and in the Europe um, and the Australia and the US. And the, the number of the collaboration has been increasing over years. <clears throat> and also the, the, all my teaching activity at the Purdue have been involved uh, with the, uh, the mechanics too. So I kind of taught uh, two um, the core courses um, at undergraduate level 
200 level and 300 level uh, in the BME. Um, I was kind of the previous instructor uh, of the BME 304 um, before the, the Vitaly. And also I developed two kind of the new courses um, the, where the student can learn the very advanced the topics uh, in the, the, the biomechanics. Um, <clears throat> And I kind of the confidently, I can confidently say that um, that I kind of the, uh, contributed to the uh, enhancement of the, the depth and the breadth of the, the curriculum in the biomechanics area um, in the BME. <clears throat> okay, so I would like to wrap up the, uh, the my presentation by the acknowledgement. So I appreciate all the like a great postdoc and graduate student and the undergraduate student who worked very hard uh, for the last seven years. And I appreciate kind of the, um, all the collaborations um, from the, the, this, these talented experimentalists over the world. Um, then I also the, the thank uh, the, all the funding kind of sources, including the NSF and NIH and CTSI. And finally, um, I the deeply uh, appreciate the consistent support of my beautiful wife, Sun Young Park, and uh, the, my uh, lovely kind of children, and Lena and Aiden. Okay. Thank you very much. Now, now given your uh, personal and professional timeline, I'll ask Alice's question. If you had to go back, uh, you know, what might you do differently or what type of recommendations might you make a make for younger potential faculty members uh, uh, or aspiring associate professors. Spend more time for the family rather than just uh, making excuse uh, due to the heavy workload, um, because um, there is uh, the way to the, the keep the balance between the work and uh, the life, and uh, you need to pay more attention to the family life and uh, the and and don't be concerned about everything and those things you know will get along pretty well eventually so the you know being concerned doesn't really help help you in terms of the mental stress and uh, you, your future well, well said Arvin yeah Taeyeon just uh, <clears throat> uh, looking back uh, at the last few years uh, you know while at Purdue I mean you painted the picture well of the key you know turning points you know prior to that uh, it, at the time you've been at Purdue, you know, uh, what are some key things that um, decisions you made that you think really, uh, you could have gone the other way, but you took it a certain way and it's turned out good, or in some cases turned out bad. What are some of those key decisions uh, or choices uh, in the last uh, years? Yes, so the my kind of the research area is kind of very specific. Um, so um, at the beginning, uh, I was frustrated by uh, kind of the so many rejected kind of proposals, and uh, I kind of the, and the, I thought maybe the my kind of the the research topic um, <clears throat> is not very popular to the the more like a larger funding agency like NI National Institute of the Health. So I kind of the, uh, was considering maybe to change the, my research topic to something more like a clinical or the more popular, uh, but I decided to just uh, keep my way and the see uh, what's gonna happen. And eventually, you know, kind of, the, I, I could get the, uh, this kind of the really kind of the generous R1 grant from the National Institute of the Health uh, by making great collaborations with other experimentalists. So I think that kind of the decision was the well made um, if I just look back. Uh, you have made outstanding collaborations all over the world and I know they're very productive. How did you do this? Because we, we have a lot of faculty who are uh, maybe, um, you know, more theoretically oriented, more computationally uh, oriented. How do you make those connections with experimentalists, number one? And how do you make them work? Because it's all about sharing data. Okay, um, I think, yes. I think that the, you know, attending the many kind of the workshop and very focused kind of the small meetings um, mm -hmm. was were very helpful for the finding kind of the experimental collaborators, and also the uh, publishing kind of the you no know, a lot I mean the several or the large number of the paper in the specific field actually was very helpful uh, to let them know um, the my name so they were kind of very willing to uh, the have a collaboration with me. 
uh, when I asked them or the, sometimes they asked me. Uh, so I think uh, that was very helpful. So, and, the, and now um, I'm having some, some several collaborators um, who actually do the pretty similar experimentalist. So now I became, I kind of the, um, I became more careful about this kind of sharing of the information uh, with the kind of the, these kind of the collaborators because I can maybe leak very sensitive information the, the, from one to the other. So I kind of the, uh, make a rule and uh, I kind of the clearly let them know I have this collaboration, ongoing collaboration, but I can collaborate with you, but I will keep this kind of rule and the policy and ethics. So, and uh, yes, I think that those are the things um, that I can say now. Indeed, those are good points, right? We all have multiple collaborators and we, and in some cases, you know, we need to keep things compartmentalized uh, for a whole yes. set of reasons. Uh, you know, especially as, as we get into more clinically oriented data, then there's a whole set of privacy uh, concerns that, uh, that are on top of that. Um, in connecting your, exper your predictions with experiments, ha have you found experimentalists willing to even change their protocols in terms of what's experiments they're undertaking, how, what measurements they're making to maybe integrate with your models? How is that back and forth gone uh, for you? Um, yes, okay. Um, I think um, th this depends on the, who's leading this kind of collaboration. So if I help some experimentalist to verify their hypothesis, then I kind of usually do try to, uh, try to do my best to kind of the reproduce their experimental result, mm -hmm. um, but if but after but if the, it doesn't work, then I kind of the kind kindly ask, ask them to maybe try some other like an experimental protocol because the, I there is no way for us I mean to the to reproduce this result, and uh, yeah, but if the, the if I lead the kind of the uh, these collaborations, then. Um, I kind of, yeah, I have more freedom to ask them maybe to change the, uh, use a specific kind of experimental protocol because that's easier to the maybe to be reproduced computationally. Um, right. So it, it, this depends on just the circumstance, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Give me a true two-way street. Yes, uh -huh. yes. Yeah, but the, all the collaborations have been going pretty well without you know, any fight and the conflict. Um, so it, it has been good very so far. But uh, managing many collaborations, it can be sometimes stressful. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Are there any, any other questions for Taehyun as we wrap up a terrific set of presentations? Arvind, can I turn it back to you then? OK, yeah. No, thank you, George. Okay. Uh, and uh, thanks to all the colleagues today. Um, uh, to Jennifer, to Joyce, uh, to Taeyoon, and to Vitelli. Uh, fantastic presentations. I just wanted to do a quick shout out here to many of the colleagues and mentors of these uh, outstanding colleagues who joined us today, uh, to Donna and George, of course, for introducing these amazing faculty. Uh, and also just like to acknowledge, we actually have amongst us some of our Lillian Gilbert postdoctoral fellows, uh, as well as uh, BTE and Latin E fellows. So welcome to all of you. Uh, and uh, thanks for joining us. This is the last celebration of associate professors uh, for this academic year. I can't believe it, but uh, the year is winding down. And so uh, please look out for uh, similar events uh, starting in the fall semester. But thank you for participating and uh, you know, have a great rest of the week, everyone. Bye-bye.